Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Game Dev Tycoon. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of recap on what's been going on lately because there's loads of statistics all over the place. So let's go over to the R&D lab. Um, but before we do that we actually need to develop a new game. Now we're going to do a small game. It's going to be... Actually no, we'll do, we've got the money to throw around. We're going to do a medium game and it's going to be on the PC. Uh, what we're actually doing here is a dummy game. So we're just going to use all of the basic stuff. We're doing this for research points. And this is something I wanted to have a look at. Our market share is up to 17%, so we want to keep developing games on that and see if we can push that higher and higher. Um, anything here doesn't really matter, so we're just going to go with a rubbishy combination that we probably haven't done before. Actually, what? I think we've done an RPG Medieval. <laughs> um, RPG probably won't go down well with... I'm not really sure, actually. I'd like to do a virtual pet game, though. Vocabulary. No one wants to play a vocabulary RPG. <laughs> okay, so we're going to aim that at the young people. Actually, it doesn't even matter, does it? Okay, so let's move on to the next bit. Um, yep, that's fine. Focusing on this too much, it doesn't matter. So, um, we're going to lower down the budget on the hardware lab. Although I've been rudely interrupted here, we don't need that. Let's just get an even spread right there and let it decide who's going to do what. Let's get that down to 500 because we've kept on top of that for a long time with no problems. And the budget over here has been dragged down to zero, by the way. So these things that I wanted to recap on, if we have a look at our game history. Um, so this hijack right here has had two expansion packs built for it. It's made 250 million profit. That is amazing. And if we go across and have a look at our most, well it was our most profitable game before that, Abductor. This one has certainly overtaken it. And I'm just going to flick through these so you can see what we've been doing lately. We've really moved into a very profitable part of the game now. So it took us a while to progress into games that made like 50 million each time. But now we've really cracked it. This latest one is making a ton of money. And I think actually we should probably um, develop another expansion pack for it while we get our research points up. Because we want one more specialist, maybe another round of training. And then uh, this thing right here doesn't matter, does it? We'll just do that. And then... And yeah, we're going to move on to doing a triple A game. Now, one of the things I'd done in one of the previous episodes, I was about to do some marketing because of the hype, but we don't need to do that, what we're doing. Um, we'd done the, if we go here and hit start project, the own convention. So when you do that, it actually launches it when you finish the research. So we'll do that in our triple A game as a promotional thing. So again, even split on these, don't need to spend extra money. And yeah, this is just a dummy game, so we'll hit finish as soon as we can. Kind of feels like we're wasting the hype a bit. I wonder if people kind of lose interest in your company or you lose any fans for doing this. I don't think you do, though. So we've got a few multipliers. They let me level up, of all people. And we're going to trash the game because it sucks. <laughs> so we got some research points, and I think Paul Reed, he looked like a candidate for specialization. So let's go... And actually, no, he needs more design points, so he's not ready. Uh, Sergio down here, almost clicked on his multiplier. We are going to train you in... Yeah, you're going to do artificial intelligence. So that will be your specialist, little field right there. And Jennifer, I think, is also suited to doing dialogues or... I think, what was the other one? There's dialogues and story. One of those two she'll do, so... Let's do a little bit of contract work. We need 30 more points and there are no contracts available at the moment. Okay, so I think we're going to develop another bogus game. But I'll do that off camera not to bore you so much. I think I'm going to do a medium one. Okay, so Jennifer is going to be specialised in story and quests. Right there. And I'm doing that in the middle of developing a game. But it's a false game so it doesn't really matter. We're only going to do a small booth. And then after this, I think we need to do another expansion pack just to keep Hijack profitable and then we'll move on to doing our triple A game. Um, so, yep, all of that it doesn't matter, does it, of course. <laughs> and I wish I hadn't adjusted the sliders now because I got them set up for doing the Hijack game. Uh, but I'll have to do them again, I guess. And we're going to use multipliers on this one. I want to make a really high score expansion pack and really reboost the MMO. Because our triple A game will be an MMO as well, so we want to get that one profitable while we develop it. One and a half million people, that's cool. And there's a ton of hype around this game that will never get released. Now let's click on finish. So 
So there we go, tiny bit of experience all over the place, doesn't really affect anything. Trash the game. Yep, that is fine, but you won't... There we go. Okay, so we can make one more specialist that's going to be Paul Reed, except we need to train him first, don't we? We need to train you in game design. So we will start that training, we'll use the multiplier as well. Do we have any contracts? Yes, contracts have come in, so we can get those extra research points. Let's do that one right there. That's going to earn us a little bit of money as well. Okay, looking good. Yeah, the multiplier works ever so well, doesn't it? Let's do another one. Okay, these aren't really worth a lot, so it doesn't really matter. We'll do the website since that pays the most. Paul Reed's training is now finished, so we have another special. No, wait a minute, we haven't trained him as a specialist just yet. Now we can do that. Um, so we already have a gameplay specialist. We don't have a story and quest specialist. I think what I would like is a world design specialist. So actually what we'll wait to do with him is get his technology up. So why don't we give him um, a programming course and the rest of these research points we're just going to do a round of training with the multipliers. Let's get everyone really boosted so we're going to go for game design course. Now I read that you can't go higher than 900 somewhere um, so we're going to find out right now. So we're going to use the multiplier. Yeah, you can go higher. <laughs> there you go, there's your evidence. So let's train Sergio down here. Oh, we could also do the uh, max boosts as well. We can't really for, um, afford that at the moment. And I'm not sure if being a general specialist like this as well helps, because we did specialise him. No, we didn't specialise him in design. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'll research and find out what that actually does. Uh, but let's see if we can get his tech over 900 as well. Okay, so no trends. Let's train Luke. Again, his design is up. Why is everyone just under 900? That's really weird. Let's get his over 900. Get that multiplier going. And what are you going to do, my friend? You are going to do programming. Use the multiplier. It's only got a plus one on design there. Interesting. Um, I just want to see her stats there. Oh right, so she only got the one up on design that took it over 900. That's really weird. And that Luke's is stuck just under 900. That is interesting. Maybe there is a sort of limit that you can reach there. Anyway, Sebastian, you are going to do speed since there seems to be a limit on tech. And design at 900, so let's do that and let's use your multiplier. And let's not forget about me as well, so what am I going to do? Technology. Programming course, there we go. Okay, and I've got to use your multiplier. There you go, speed just went up a hell of a lot then. Okay, so all of that has been used really effectively. We're now ready to um, develop another expansion pack for our game, Hijack. Okay, we've started development of the expansion pack. This one is going to be called More Pilots, <laughs> since the last ones were more planes and more hijackers. So we've got to do the sliders again. Now, we got these focused really well, it would seem. Um, so we pretty much want nothing on story and quests. And something like that should work well. Uh, but let's add in those extra things right there on the side, because all of these have been unselected from doing our dummy games. Let's put the cheapest ones in. Uh, so we want a touch more on the engine, it would look like. And can we still get away with the graphics if we have it that high? Uh, we're not doing the graphics yet, so what am I talking about? <laughs> Never mind. Let's do all of these. Okay, we can do all the way up to skill tree. Possibly we could select that one instead of character possession. Yeah, we can. And so... What is Sergio? See, Sergio is a specialist in artificial intelligence. So we're going to have to put someone else on that. Um, someone else who's also a specialist. Ah, Sebastian Todd is our specialist. Why has he not been selected for that job? I do not know. Um, and Jennifer is a specialist on that. However, we're not really doing too much there. But think about it. This first bit right here has three specialists working on it. So let's get our um, multipliers going. 
good. Let's do a bit of uh, marketing as well. Let's start off with a small campaign. That is insane. <laughs> Those points are flying up. The bugs, we've already got 125 of those. But the second set of sliders, level design, nothing on dialogues, and artificial intelligence. Actually, I'd like to put a bit more focus on the level design on this one. So we're going to go with that right there. And those three. And can we get dynamic environment? We can. Can we get no loading screens? Probably not. So we'll go with it that way around. Nope, we can't add that. <laughs> of course not. Okay, so who's going to do what here? Well, our level design specialist can take care of that. That's good to see. Sebastian Todd is an engine specialist. We have an artificial intelligence specialist. So I don't know why um, he wasn't selected to do that. And there we go. Right, so on to the next level. Now we're going to do a bit more marketing. We're going to go with a large campaign. It feels like the campaigns don't really make too much difference anymore. The hype just continually goes up. And if you time it right as well with the uh, with the E3 conference, then that's the main way to get hype, it seems. Okay, so, third set of sliders. I've just noticed we're over a thousand on each of those, a thousand one hundred even. Um, I'm the graphics specialist, so all the way to the top for me, because I need to do um, 3D Mark 7. So let's drag down the sound, and I think it was well designed uh, that we don't really need to put too much of a focus on. So that right there, Looks like it could work. We'll drag that up just a touch. Okay, and who's doing what? So do we have a sound specialist? We don't. And we don't have a well-designed specialist. It doesn't really matter who does what, who does what there. Um, so those two will work out fine like that. So everything's pretty much been selected for us. We can even add a soundtrack into this game. And there we go. We can add two of those. Bridge backstory. Can we drag that up a touch? And then sound up. There we go. Okay, well that's about the best we can do it. No one is overworked. And this is probably going to be our best game yet. Think about all the training that we've done. Let's use the multipliers quickly while I remember. And myself. Almost forgot about myself. Yep, this is going to be the best one. Let's do some more marketing. And Hijack is actually losing a lot of money now, I've just noticed. Because it costs 8.8 .8 million to maintain. That is an insane amount of money. Okay, so we want to go with a large booth. And do you know what? I'm now tempted to wait a month in this stage to get all of the press from that. I think we're going to be able to pull it off, you know. So we're in week three. Now we're going into week four. Yep, we're going to be able to pull it off. And I've just noticed something very bad. Let's slide over here quickly and drag up our budget there. You can see we've got some uh, backlog in the red there, so we're going to drag that up to a million and keep on top of that. And this is something I guessed earlier, didn't I? I said in one of the previous episodes that maybe over time that would start to increase because the console had been around for a long time and older consoles are more likely to break. And I think at the moment we're actually losing a fair bit of money, but we've broken two million. I don't think we've done that before, so that's a, a good sign. Okay, now we're just getting a few extra points, which we don't really need because they're so high, so we're just actually going to finish it. <laughs> Except there's loads coming in, let's just finish it. Okay, cool. And now we don't have a backlog as well, which is good, so we can lower the budget back down over there. Leveled up on 3D graphics. Let's release that game. New record on both of those, by the way. Let's go... Oh. Okay, the review came in. And it is a 9. A 10. 9 and another 9. So 9.25, that is going to do really well. Uh, let's drag the budget back down to half a million. There we go. Okay, that's cool. Outstanding responses. Sales are back in, so this game is going to be profitable again, at least for a while. And that has also boosted the sales of the game box. So now, a moment ago we had 850 million. When I looked, we've made 100 million in about three weeks there. Um, so let's do a little bit of contract work as always in between our projects. We're going to be moving on to the triple A game now. And one of the things I wanted to do for that was have my own convention. So we're going to start that and we're going to drag the budget up to about 2 million. We need 500 points so when we get closer to that I'm going to drag it down and we'll try and get this finished at the same time that we release that triple A game. Uh, but before we do any of that, uh, what do we want to do? 
to find more contract work, yeah. I was just thinking about training and specialisation for a second. I don't think we want to do too much of this, so we're going to do one more contract and then we're going to move on to our triple A game. Okay, it's time. Triple A game. The first one we're going to do is going to be called Time Failure. It's aimed at everyone. So MMO, it's going to be a time travelling action adventure game on the game box with our latest game engine, uh, which is the one that we've been using for quite some time now. Um, so one thing that I have done is I've given everyone a round of speed training. I haven't used their multipliers. A couple of people have got more multipliers and I did that so that they would be worn out and then I could send them on vacation because I figured uh, that we'd done quite a lot of stuff and yeah, it wouldn't be long before they wanted to go on vacation. Probably not the best. Uh, to do that in the middle of our own AAA game. And I also developed a fake game as well, but that's like really not important. That just got me a few more research points. So, 3D Graphics Mark 7. And what was this that we were doing? Um, I think I've forgotten the combination now, which is never too clever. Let's just go back a second. Action Adventure. Yep, that's right. Okay, cool. So, let's start the development. Ah, Marketing Campaign and Custom Hardware. Interesting, I thought we'd sort of reached the end over there. It's good to know there's more. Now, you've noticed that I've dragged the budget down over here. That's because I wanted to control when that would be finished. So we're going to drag that up to 2 million and get the timing perfect here. So this is going to be like our ultimate game that we're aiming for right here. So we're going to try and take everything that we've learned so far and really kind of bring it to this one. Uh, but we're going to go with a split like that for this because it is an adventure game. There does need to be... Um, a fair amount of focus on the gameplay and story as well, in fact let's just make that a tad bigger. But a lot of focus on the engine because of the action. So how are we going to do this? Story and quests, we want to get at least two of those selected. Can we do that? We can. I'm wondering if because we're doing a triple A game it means we can select more things and I'm wondering if that could be bad if we overwork our people at all. See look I've selected advanced physics there and we can get away with that. So if I were to take one thing off, it would probably be video playback, maybe? Go with that. Okay, so with it being a AAA game, it looks like there's going to be a lot of work for people. Um, so let's go down to gameplay and select as many of these as we can. Right, so we're not going to select the virtual reality headset or cooperative play. And now it's at 94%, we will take away the steering wheel. Okay, so that is very interesting. Right. So who specialises in what? Sebastian Todd specialise, bleh, specializes, specialises, not specialises, um, in that. Now notice how it didn't assign anyone to each different slider, and I remember once I saw that you could assign two people to one slider. I don't know where I saw that, because I'm pretty sure I did it myself, but apparently not. And it doesn't appear that you can do that this time as well. So we have a gameplay specialist, that is Luke Harper. And we have a story and quest specialized, uh, specialist as well, which is Jennifer. So let's select all of them right there. Okay, and they are surprisingly not as worked as I thought they would be, which is interesting to see. So it was Jennifer, Luke, and uh, I forgot the other guy. I think it was you. <laughs> let's hope I got that right. Okay, so we've got a tiny bit of hype so far. Our own convention is about to start very soon, possibly in our second set of sliders. So let's get a little bit of base marketing done for this. We're going to go with a large campaign. Probably not worth doing those anymore, but then again, look at the amount of money that we have. So there we go, we completed the organisation of our own company. Okay, this is looking great. And we're spending a lot more time on this, aren't we? Because it's a triple A game. So our own game convention is taking place in four weeks. Well, that's perfect timing for me. Yeah, I've just realised. Look how long... Oh no, okay, I thought it was going to go all the way across the slider bar, but it's not, it's just doing a third. So this next bit, we don't really need to focus on, on dialogues, although it is an adventure game. So we're going to go with AI around here, level design lagging behind it a bit, and dialogues will add a little bit there, just so there's something basic going on. That's interesting, because it's a triple A game, we can add more of this. And this gives us a new incentive to do more research on these topics now, because triple A games can hold all of this, so I now see how it works. <laughs> so we'll take mini games out, possibly Easter eggs, possibly level design. No, Easter eggs is the smallest we're going to get away with there. So artificial intelligence, we'll probably be able to select all of those, and I think this is where it really all comes together now. 
So we have a artificial intelligence specialist, you're going to work on that. We have a level design specialist, you're going to work on that. And dialogues is going to be done by Jennifer again, because it's a similar topic to story and quest. So Philip and Sergio, they need their multipliers, let's find them. There's Philip, Sergio's down there. And so it's Paul Reed and myself for the last wave are going to use our multipliers. Hype is starting to roll in a little bit. And I just noticed the month and the week thing. This is our own game convention. It's around the same time that we actually do E3 normally, but we don't have that. So how many people are we going to attract? Whoa, <laughs> two million. Insane. Insanity. Okay, look at those design and tech points. This is going to be a crazy game right here. And Hijack just started selling a load of copies again. I'm not sure why. Oh, because of the convention, so that helped boost that as well. So perhaps consistently researching that in here can continuously boost our MMO. Okay, that's really interesting. Okay, so we can do a marketing campaign. Hmm. I wonder if we could finish that before the game finishes. I don't think we could, but I will drag the budget all the way to the top. Um, I've got a feeling that's going to be like the campaign thing as well, though. Um, so let's see, the last set of sliders, we're going to be focusing all on graphics, really. So that'll be an even split right there. We can add stereoscopic 3D. We can probably add all of these right here. So let's go put them in. Let's take out dynamic world and realistic weather. Or possibly that. Yep, we can get away with that one. Okay, so who will do what? As always, I will be doing the graphics because I am the specialist. And I'm, o I'm going to be overworked as well. Um, so we need to bring up the sound a touch. Which is going to take away from the level design you can see there. Okay, now I'm at 100%. Let's go and look at that again. Everything is fine. So, who will do... Paul Reed, uh, you are not a specialist in anything yet. And we don't have a world design specialist. So I'm going to put you on that. And I think we can put Philip on sound. He might be overworked. So Paul Reed, can you actually do both? Yes, you can. You are doing both and you will have 100%. That works out nicely, didn't it? And let's use our multipliers. And on these guys as well. Let's just go all out with this game. There's another multiplier freeing up right there. This is going to be insane. Um, I'm not going to drag up the marketing campaign as well. I don't think that's going to come in in time. However, I want to just drag ourselves over here and have a look at this. So we can develop a project and we can start a project as well. Custom hardware. So there is more going on here. Um, so let's start that. And we need to keep on top of our backlog as well. So we're going to drag the budget up to around a million per month. And the R&D lab budget is currently two million. We're going to drag that down to a million. Don't want to overspend, although we could obviously afford it. <laughs> look at the amount of money we have. Okay, so it's debugging time. And we have record design and technology points. Yes, we should have started doing AAA games a long time ago by the looks of it. But you learn. You live and you learn. I think I've taken a very cautious approach with this game. Always made sure I've had lots of money available. And so I always spent more time developing lots of games rather than pushing on to the next thing. But it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> and there's still more to go with this game. Okay, now we're getting those extra points. Let's get 2,500 on design for sure. And this is, you know, this right now is making such a little difference that we probably should just click finish when we're ready. It's going to be so little, those extra points, compared to the ones that we've already got. We've got all our multipliers. We've got a level up on graphics, story, and dialogues. And Paul Reed has leveled up as well. So let's release that game. There we go, salary increase. And as always, I'm going to do a little bit of contract work. Let's find an expensive one. That first one looked good. Oh, there we go, that one right there. Space shuttle. <laughs> Are we designing a space shuttle now? Okay, time failure reviews have come in. It's a good one. It's a nine. Can we get a ten? We've got a nine. A nine. And a nine. Nine's all around. Oh, let's just uh, wait for the sales. Let's see what happens around the place. And this is an MMO, so are we going to now work on the hijack one? Bring that one back again, make it profitable? 
I'm not sure. Oh, we didn't make the deadline. Oh well, doesn't matter. <laughs> Got tons of research points here. Let's just sit back and watch for a second because we're making tons of money. So if we go, um, <laughs> trying to remember what I wanted to do. Game history. That's the one. So we haven't made any profit on time failure yet. I think it's time to take Hijack off the market. However, look at the amount of money it made. Also cost a lot actually to keep running. I think it's time we took that off the market. Yep. And we shouldn't lose any fans this time because they're now going to move on to uh, the next game. I think is how it works. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Okay, very cool. Yeah, we've read all this before, haven't we? Okay, let's take a little cut. Okay, that went on a lot longer than I expected. Uh, that is going to be it for this episode. What I'm going to do now is train up these guys, um, but I'm not going to be recording any more today. So when I come back in the next episode, um, all of these guys will be trained up, just so you know. But anyway, uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.